Hi, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. Did you know you can follow me on Instagram at the Sewing Room channel and I also have a Facebook page that you should come by and check it out. Now in this video tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to make this really easy and really fun to make Christmas stocking. So let's get started. You will need a piece of paper approximately 12 by 18 inches. If you do not have paper that large, take some paper and tape it together. A suggestion is you can use wrapping paper or I use this paper here which I got at Home Depot. Really, really cheap. Two or three dollars for this entire roll of paper. So now, up here at the top, from this side here, from the right side, you're going to go over and put a mark at 7 inches. Then go down here and 6 and a half inches from the bottom go up and then 6 and a half inches again from your right side go over and draw a line. Now you've got all of these lines drawn. You want to take something round, go into your kitchen and look for something round that's possibly five and a half inches in diameter or anywhere from four and a half to five and a half inches. These are templates by June Taylor. You can get them at Joann Fabrics and Crafts and there's five different sizes in here. So go to your lower corner and draw a, a curved line. Go down here and do the same thing. Go up here and draw a line. Now down here in the ankle area, I took a little bit smaller circle and drew a line. Then you can go ahead and highlight those lines you need to draw on. So go ahead and cut your template out. I like to transfer my pattern to cardstock. So you can either draw it on your cardboard, but I suggest you draw it on paper first, then transfer it to some thin cardboard. You can get cardstock at office supply stores, you can even get it at Walmart and even drugstores. So on this, I'm going to show you how you can change the shape of this boot to make it look like something else. For instance, if you want it to look more like a sock instead of a boot, you can cut a little half moon shape out of the arch and out of the ankle and make your toe here a little bit more pointed. I like the boot shape because you can stuff more goodies in it, so that's why I like it. Also, if you like the stockings that are flared up at the top, this is real easy to do. You can just take it and go over anywhere from a quarter inch to a half an inch and trace a line on your fabric here. So this is a very versatile pattern. So you can do anything you want with this. Start with this basic pattern and change it to any shape that you like. So what I like to use is these weights. So before you lay your pattern out, make sure your fabric is folded with selvage edges together and lay your pattern on top. And then I use just weights to hold my cardboard in place. Once you've got all your weights situated around it, you can either draw around it, or me, that takes too long. I just take my good old rotary cutter and begin to cut all the way around. So if you want the border up here at the top, then the fabric that you've cut out for the main portion of the stocking, you want to make it three and a quarter inches shorter. So if you're cutting this out at 18 inches long, you're actually going to cut it three and a quarter inches shorter. Cut out a piece of fabric for the top that's three and a half inches. Then stitch them together up at the top using a quarter inch seam and then press this seam towards 
the border strip. To save time on cutting, I like to layer all my fabrics and cut everything out at the same time. But you can cut them out individually if you like. So I've got two layers of cotton batting and then two layers of fabric that's going to be for the lining. So I've got that all laid out. Then just take one of your fabric pieces for your stocking. And we're going to be doing quilting stitches. So you need to cut this about an inch larger than the shape, the size of your stocking fabric here, right here. So take, I suggest you use a rotary cutter and just do a rough cut around the entire pattern. Now layer the fabrics for the both sides of the stocking. Lay down your lining fabric, then your cotton batting, and then lay your outside fabric on top. Again, make sure you have excess fabric extending past all sizes, all edges. Scatter pins over the top so that it's ready to do quilting stitches. The stitches are to help hold the fabric layers together. So you can do straight lines of stitching like this and then you would turn your stocking and then go across the other way. You can make them anywhere from an inch to an inch and a half apart. You can even do them on a diagonal pattern like this. And then also if you have the serpentine stitch on your sewing machine, most computerized sewing machines have a serpentine stitch. This is very decorative, so you can do this also, and you can even do this one on a diagonal. If you have a walking foot, I recommend you use that. This helps to prevent the fabric layers from shifting apart. You can still do these quilting stitches without it, but just make sure that your presser foot is not putting little pin tucks in your fabric. After your quilting stitches are done, then you want to trim this excess fabric off. So I recommend using a rotary cutter because it's really fast. So you would just go along real close and trim it off so that it looks like this. To make the loop so that you can hang it, cut a piece of fabric two inches wide by four inches long. Then go to your ironing board, fold it in half, and press. Then do some more pressing. Bring the side edges in towards that center fold line and press again. Then fold it in half and press one more time. Then stitch close to the edge all along here. Bring both sides of the stocking front sides together. And this is pretty thick right now, so it's more difficult to put straight pins in. So if you have these little clips here, they're quilters clips. I think there's also, uh, they're also called wonder clips. Now I'm going to show you where to place the loop. So here is the heel. You want to put it on the side where the heel is and place it about an inch and a quarter from the top edge. So fold it in half and here's the folded edge. 
it goes inside like this and the raw edges of the loop are against the raw edges of the stocking and go ahead and put a clip to hold. Now do a one quarter inch seam starting at the top edge and go all the way around back up to this top edge and make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end. To prevent the raw edges from unraveling while it's being used, I recommend you select one of your overlock stitches on your machine. And here are some examples of what those look like. I'm using this one right here. If you do not have any stitches that look like this, then select a zigzag stitch. And you're going to go all the way around all of the raw edges except for the top edge. To cover the raw edges, cut a piece of fabric that's two and a half inches wide this way and approximately 16 inches this way. Then fold it in half and press. Place the raw edge of your binding up at the raw edge at the top of the stocking. Then wrap the binding around the top edge. Overlap the ends by about, oh, three-eighths of an inch. And then with a pair of scissors, you're going to cut the excess fabric off. After trimming the ends, then go ahead and pin it up at the top edge all the way around. Continue pinning until you get around back to the front. Then fold the stocking in half and bring the two ends of the binding together and place pins to hold. Then stitch a quarter inch seam all along that edge. Finger press the seam open, fold the binding in half, Finish pinning it down and then stitch one quarter inch seam all along that edge. To make it easier to stitch on such a narrow area, I recommend removing the storage compartment that is around the arm of your sewing machine and then slip the stocking over that arm. Now stitch one quarter inch seam all the way around. When you get to where your seams are at on the side, open them up and then place the binding back down and stitch over it. Now reach inside and begin turning it front side out. Now pull the binding out and wrap it over the top to bring it to the front side. Place it back over the arm of your sewing machine and you're going to stitch all the way around close to this edge. Well, here it is all done. You can use traditional looking Christmas fabric or you can make it kind of funky and more contemporary looking. This one is for my little uh, grandnephew Carlitos and he loves cars and he's really into action figures and if you want to you can also make it very very elegant all of this fabric has metallic and glitter on it and so this one's very elegant I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial I also have one other 
Christmas stocking tutorial. This one's a little bit more elaborate. It takes just a little bit more sewing skill, but it's really, really pretty. So try this one out. Thanks for watching and happy sewing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, would you please click on the thumbs up button and don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. If you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. And don't forget to click on the bell and enter your email address so you receive email notifications about my latest video. I'm Cheryl and this is Manny. See you next time and happy sewing!